Today, I'm going to show you how to make a hydromel, which is a low ABV mead, and uh, it's pretty easy. So let's get started. Now, the good thing about a hydromel, or hydromel, as some people call them, um, is it is super low ABV, which means your cost of ingredients is generally pretty low. For today's recipe, we're using um, roughly about or it'll be probably seven eighths of a gallon of water. We only need, my speculation is about three quarters of a pound of honey to maybe a pound of honey, which I have here, and a little bit of Lavin D47. So that's our, our recipe right there. And the, it's about one gram of, of yeast. I'm using the Lavin D47. It's a good wine yeast, also a good mead yeast. Pretty, uh, you can get it pretty much anywhere. So. The honey I'm using is cheat wood raw honey, which is local to me here in Oklahoma. So a hydromel is anything that is below 7%. And again, low ingredient cost, all of those things. Super simple, and I'm gonna walk you through the process. Step one, you need to make sure and get all your ingredients, that's fine. Step two, sanitize everything. Today I've sanitized with Star Sand, which is my brewing star, uh, sanitizer of choice. I have a bucket here, soak everything in it. Um, I've already cleaned off my carboy, done all that stuff. Step three, we're gonna start uh, mixing ingredients in. So I'm gonna go ahead and pour in um, a roughly about three quarters of a gallon of water. So let me go ahead and do that first. So I've mixed in my water or poured my water in. I wanna get my um, hydrometer reading or my gravity reading, which tells us how alcoholic this can be, up to about 1.045. That will set me somewhere in the realm of, I believe, six point maybe 6%, a little less than 6%, 5.8, something like that. But that is a perfect realm for the hydromel. And I'll tell you of, about some uh, conflicts you'll run into when you make a hydromel here in a moment. Next thing we need to do is mix in our honey. Uh, I gotta do a little bit of testing to know exactly how much honey to use in this case. So give me a second and I'll tell you exactly how much honey I've used. All right, after lots of mixing, I have my combination. I used more honey than I thought. I used about 1.3 pounds of this cheat wood, which is a clover honey. We're currently at, and I know there's some foam on top. We're at 1.048. So just very, very close. I could see from the bottom here. So 1.048 uh, means that we are gonna end up a little bit hotter than I thought. Um, that puts us at about a 6.2%, I believe, possibility, which is still in the hydromel range and that's totally fine. Next step, we're gonna take our yeast, which I already had an open packet of this Lavin D47, so I'm gonna use it. And um, in this case, I'm gonna go ahead and measure out one gram of yeast. One gram of yeast will chew through all of the sugars we have here. All right, now that we have our yeast, one gram here, <clears throat> we could have gone ahead and rehydrated it, meaning put, it, put water on top which would have helped wake up the yeast. In this case, I think they're gonna be okay. Normally you wanna rehydrate if you're in a very high gravity, high ABV sake, um, or it's just a good practice. In this case, I'll be okay. I'm gonna uh, pour that on top. I'm gonna shake it up just a little bit to uh, mix in this. There's a slight little head of foam, which will of course kind of go down, and uh, which will be fine. So let me go ahead and shake this up some. From here, I take my airlock and my bung, and I put them on top, which the airlock helps me see that there's activity, it keeps things from getting inside the mead. You can do this without an airlock um, in a bung. You can use a balloon with a tiny hole pricked into it. Fills, fills up the uh, balloon when CO2 is going out, but then it lets them out at the time. Um, you don't have to do this in glass. You could do this in a plastic something else fermenter, or you know if you have a grape juice or you know whatever you want to do. However, it's bad to age in plastic. Don't age things in plastic. Huge warning right here, this is important. Hydromels, because they're low ABV, are very susceptible to bacteria. So if you do not sanitize well, there's a huge chance it's gonna go south, you're gonna lose your brew. So make sure you sanitize everything super well because you don't have alcohol to combat the um, bad bacteria. Now, we're gonna go ahead and write down the information on this thing so we know exactly what's in it. And when we started it, we're gonna let it go through the primary fermentation. This is step four, I think. Uh, and it, it's gonna go through and chew through all of the sugar that we gave it. And then we'll do another gravity reading. We'll go from there. So let me go ahead and write my information down, put it away. And uh, we're gonna move on now to the 
uh, after primary section. And the hydromel has finished fermenting. It took roughly about eight days, nine days. And um, I know it's done fermenting because I've seen the bubble slow. And at this point, I'm familiar enough with brewing to see if something is just gassing compared to actually fermenting. Let's go ahead and take a gravity reading just to really make sure that this thing is done, um, which it should be. Our current gravity is 1.0. Zero, zero. We started at 1.048, which was like 6.5%. Again, this thing is done fermenting. Let's go and do a taste test and see where it's at. I have a feeling I'm gonna need, some a need to add some acid blend. Yeah, okay. Definitely very light, light bodied. The uh, clover, not clover, the cheatwood honey that I used still has a nice, um, very bright floral pop to it, a little fruity. There's a bit of carbonation just because of the degassing side. This thing is still degassing some. It's a little flat though. I think some carbonation will help with that. But I do think a little more um, bright note from it would be nice. Yeah. Okay, it definitely needs some, some umph, something to really push it. So what I'm gonna do, I've already decided I'm gonna do this because I think it'd be nice. I'm gonna use some acid blend on this. And I'll just be very upfront with you. There are ways to do this where you get an acid um, testing kit and you take the acidity of the mead and then you compare that and then you go in this calculator system and you say, how much acid do I need to blah, 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 blah. I'm not doing that. So if you're mad, sorry about you. Here's what I'm gonna do. I am gonna take my acid blend, which is right here. And I am going to go ahead and I'm gonna add some just enough to kind of taste. And I'll tell you how many, quote, grams I use at the end, which is gonna be a really, really, really tiny amount because this stuff is strong. So I'm gonna uh, add some straight to it, just a little at a time, because I can always add more. And then I'll, I'll tell you how much I've added. So let me go ahead and do that real fast. Actually, first, before I go too crazy, I am gonna go ahead and rack it into a new container because all this yeast and stuff at the bottom is stuff I don't want. So I'm gonna do that. All right, I racked it over. I literally only added one gram of the acid blend, which is malic, tartaric, and some other acid. I can't remember. And it's definitely helped the brightness. Also helps help the mouthfeel. It definitely has a little more tang to it, if that's what I want to say. It's helped pronounce that honey character. I don't want to go any further with this. That was one, not even one gram. That was point like nine two, I think, grams of acid blend. A minuscule amount, what I'm trying to say. So now, here's what I'm gonna do. I am going to, um, because this is a hydromel, it can be ready really soon. I am actually going to take and bottle this thing today. And the, the acid itself there is not going to ferment any. There is honey character that I like. I could go ahead and back sweeten this thing with some other sugar, but I kind of like it where it's at, where it's, um, got a little residual sweetness because of the honey uh, floral side. I don't want to add a bunch of honey on top of it. So it's going to be more like a, a cider of some sort. So here's what we're going to do. Now this is racked over. Let's go ahead and take and add some priming sugar. So I'm going to do that real fast. All right, let's go ahead and add our priming sugar to this world. I think it's super good. Um, and we need because this is, this is currently five grams, five ounces of priming sugar. We don't need all that. Five ounces is enough for five gallons of beer for most um, carbonation levels. We're gonna add one ounce. So thankfully I have this scale here that can give me any one of those. So we're gonna add one ounce. Uh, we're gonna add 0.9 ounces because this isn't quite one gallon of priming sugar to this. All right, here's our priming sugar. This is fermentable by yeast, so. All right, mixed everything in, all of our priming sugar, all of that stuff. I'm gonna go ahead and start bottling this. I have bottles, I have sanitized everything, of course. Thank you very much. Fill up each bottle and cap it and all that. While I'm doing this, let me tell you a couple things. Do you have to use acid blend? No, you don't need acid blend. Acid blend is really only useful if your mead or wine or whatever you're using um, the acidity or the mouthfeel is very low or flat. So, 
could I have used one of those acid um, testers? Absolutely. Did I really need to? In this case, no, because I'm doing homebrew stuff and some people go on the camp that when you homebrew, you need to be even more technical and you know, you need to calculate out to the 9.6278% ABV. And I'm not of that camp to be honest with you. So I'm making stuff that I think is good. If I go into a future of making mead as a commercial brewer, for sure, I'm gonna do that stuff. Do I know how to do it? Yeah, but I don't wanna do that kind of crazy math. I don't really care about um, trying to figure out pH, pH levels and those things. I'm making stuff that's good for me. For you, do what you want. If that makes you mad, sorry, but that's how I brew. So, um, now I'm gonna finish bottling these and then cap them, cork them, do all those things. We'll let this go ahead and uh, carbonate, which we could have chosen a forced carbonation method, AKA kegging. However, I don't really have that option at a grand scale. I do have a one gallon keg. I could have um, car forced carbonated this with, but I didn't. So this is bottle carbing it. Um, go look up kegging if that's of your camp. I can't say a ton about it. Uh, in a mess in a massive scale. So I'm gonna finish this and then be right back. In total, I have seven beer bottles, one basically 750 milliliter beer, beer bottle, and a lot of things to clean. So I normally put something like this label up there. In fact, that's the label I'm gonna put on here. Ultimately, it's not made yet, which is why it's not being posted onto them currently. But that's what I'm gonna put on there. Let's let this bottle carbonate and then taste test it and see how it turns out. Time for a taste test. It has been a week and a half, two weeks since our Hydromel started bottle carbonating. We're gonna go ahead and see how it tastes. And it's called the High Five Dromel. I don't know if I actually mentioned that earlier, but let's see if there's any carbonation. Ah, that is a very nice sound. And that was a good one. Sometimes when you um, carbonate, it can be um, not as busy, not as loud. So let's go ahead and see how much carbonation we have. Ooh, this thing looks really nice. Super light colored. I'm just gonna pour the whole thing. Look at that. That right there. I mean, I, I think I got some of the yeast at the bottom, oops. Um, because of course there's yeast at the bottom of the bottle because that's what helps you carbonate. It was so clear until I did that, but you can see there's carbonation maybe. Yeah, let's taste test it. Wow, very crisp, very bright. The um, uh, Cheatwood honey has a really unique characteristic to me that is uh, a very light flower. I can't put my, my finger on it, but what kind of flower it is, but it's very light floral. There's definitely a fair amount of fruitiness. Um, it is kind of sweet, perceived sweetness. And of course we added, um, we were trying to add our, we didn't, well, like I said this, we can't put real, we couldn't have put real sugar into this because we had to keep the mead from being stabilized. So it's not super sweet, but there's perceived sweetness, which definitely allows for us to kind of hold on to something. It's got some body. The carbonation is really nice. It has added some body to this thing, added some sweetness. Um, I definitely think the, not sweetness, but it's added fullness to it, I should say. The carbonation is really nice. This was really easy to make, which is super nice and interesting to me because I, um, of course I like making big body things that take two months for or however long. Um, I also like making things I can churn out in six weeks and be done. This is one of those things I could churn out in six weeks and be done, even from bottling. This is extremely refreshing. It needs a couple things. I think the acid blend that we used helped to fill out some of the acidity and the, the flatness of it, um, maybe fill out some of the body. That's kind of what I'm getting. I do think I could have benefited from a little bit of non-fermentable sugar in some manner, um, like some erythritol, I think it's what's called, or some other one, to help 
sweeten it, make it not really cidery, but to help bolster that character. I wish I could add more honey to get more honey presence. There is honey presence, but it is more floral than it is um, sweet. And I wish I could get the sweetness from honey than more so than the floral side. Overall, for like a six week, six week turnaround, really good. Um, I definitely think, if you wanna make this recipe, of course it's down below, you can see I highly encourage you to make a hydromel. At some point in your career, get out of the big body meads and try to make something light because it's nice to have something on a summer day when it's really hot to just sip on. And while that 15 to 18% mead might be good sometimes, there are lots of times where a 7%, 6.5% mead probably is gonna suit you better. So. Speaking of that, this thing, after of course adding priming sugar, probably ended at 7% because we were already teetering the line of 6.5, so priming sugar probably kicked us up to 10, not 10, 7%. So we're still technically a hydromel. If we go anything above a hydromel, or above, above 7%, it's not a hydromel, but that's okay. I really enjoyed this. My recipe is here. Um, there are lots of other recipes for hydromels. Uh, the one that kind of inspired me is from Doing the Most. Um, his crispy honey, honey crispy, crispy honey, hydromel, something like that, um, that he has adapted from another source, actually, um, is something I really liked as well. And he does a lot of great stuff. I personally have tried his and it was really good. Inspired mine. I hope you will go make, make one yourself. I hope you'll hit subscribe and like and all those things because of course, those things help the channel. And uh, yeah, thank you so much for watching. This has been fantastic. I am definitely looking forward to making this again, trying some new honeys, doing those things. It'll be a lot of fun. Have a great day and cheers.